Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today, Wednesday, is patch day, at least for the North America server, for update 1011 for World of Warships. And in this video today, we're going to just let you guys know what you need to know about 1011. Obviously, there is a lot in this patch, as this is the New Year's slash Christmas celebration patch, so it's always a very busy time of the year for the game. But like I said in today's video, we're just going to go through and go over what you guys need to know. There's a lot more detailed information available in the article that I'm going to be referencing. Link is in the description down below if you wish to check it out. And do go check it out because when they release these update articles, you can get a free day of premium time out of it. So if anything else, just come here and find that free premium day and go grind to your heart's content for that 24 hours. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. Again, article is in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourselves. And I will throw any relevant images or artwork up on the screen as we go through the event. So right off the bat, the Christmas celebration is beginning along with Santa's gift container event. If you guys don't know, the Santa gift container event is a very big event at the end of the year where you can obtain many of uh, rare and removed premium ship from the Santa gift containers. There's three different containers for you to get in this event. You might have noticed that the Snowflake event has already been in action in the game. The Snowflake event is a very simple event. All you have to do is win a battle in a ship or earn 300 base XP in a ship. The rewards are dished out uh, for the following tiers. For tier 5 to tier 7, you get 750 gold per win or per 300 base XP win on that ship during this event. Now, this is not repeating. You can only do it once per ship. For tier 8 to tier 9 ships, you earn 75 steel per win or per 300 base XP match. For tier 10 ships per win or per 300 base XP match, you win one New Year certificate, which can be exchanged for Santa... Santa's containers in the event. So they say that you can get a normal Santa gift container for one New Year's certificate, a big Santa's gift container for three New Year's certificates, or a mega Santa's gift container for five certificates. Now something that I need to correct that I said a few videos ago is that the big Santa's gift containers are the best bang for the buck. This year it's different. They've done the math. The math wizards have done it yet again. And the Santa's mega gift containers give you the best chance of getting a premium ship. Now, I have done a video on the odds of premium ships, of getting premium ships, I should say, in these containers. That link will be somewhere around here or in the description below as well. If you want to see the exact odds, they did release those so we can see exactly what chance we have of getting a ship this year. All right, now they are launching this New Year's celebration event called New Year's Night. It's just like basically the Battle of the Beasts and the Soviet Stockyard event. You choose a faction, complete daily challenges, earn rewards through that. Uh, nothing too major, just click one, play the game, you'll get some pretty free stuff, including one of three snow giant commanders and such. A couple collections you can complete too by again completing missions and such. But again, not really a major thing, just something you can do on the side to get some rewards including some Santa's containers, some other containers and such. So, the dockyard is of course one of the main features of this update. So the, the Marlboro dockyard is beginning. Now the Marlboro herself, she is, according to Wargaming, a mix of the Vanguard and King George V class ships. She has 16 356mm guns and 4 turrets. Whew! That's a lot of guns. Now, unlike the Colombo that has a large reload time for her large cal uh, large number of guns, the Marlborough has a fairly quick reload time, 25 seconds, I do believe, with the module equipped. So this is the dockyard ship that should be up for North America when this goes live. Now, I will be getting this ship as soon as I can and put out a review for her. There are some very important things you need to note about the dockyard, though. As with all dockyards, there are two starter packs that will be offered for a limited amount of time. Now, in the update notes, they do not mention how long they are going to be available for. They're normally available, I believe, for the first week of the event. One starter bundle is worth 9,900 dubs, 
And then there is another one for 5,500. The 9,900 dubs, that will give you 12, I'm sorry, 11 shipbuilding phases. The 5,500 dub bundle will give you 5 shipbuilding phases. So total, you can get 16 shipbuilding phases off the bat for about 14,000, or actually no, 15,000 dubs and change, which is a good deal because each individual phase of the dockyard if you want to buy through it is 1500 dubs so do you have to buy through it no you can buy through it if you want to but it's definitely not required and i really wouldn't really recommend it unless you want to get the steel you get by completing the phases afterwards but there are some pretty sweet rewards for this one in terms of premium ships so you get dreadnought during this event, so basically they're giving away Dreadnought for free, and then you get the Repulse, the long-awaited British Battlecruiser Repulse, one of the renowned class battlecruisers, a ship that I have been waiting for just an eternity to get in the game. Finally, it's here, and it will be a free ship. All you have to do is complete the 18th phase of the Dockyard, which you can do completely for free. In total, you can do 27 of the 32 shipbuilding phases completely for free by just doing the combat missions. And the combat missions aren't out when I'm recording this, but I'm fully capable of believing that they are going to be just like the previous dockyard missions, which really aren't hard at all. They do rank up in difficulty toward the end of the dockyard. But definitely at the halfway point with the 18th phase, I can't imagine they'll be terribly difficult. That's something you can easily do by just playing the game. In fact, when I've done the past, shoot, three or four dockyard ships, when I go through and buy them to review for you guys, I go back and I just, of course, play the game by doing reviews and streaming and such, and I easily complete the dockyard and get the additional rewards afterwards. Speaking of additional rewards, if you do buy through the entire phase of the docker at all 32 phases you will get 250 still for each completed phase if you go back and play through the combat missions and get the phases that way oh by the way dreadnought she is on the sixth phase of the dockyard and if you do have the dreadnought already you will get 5.2 million credits as compensation for that ship i honestly would would have liked them to comp us with the blooms since, you know, we've paid the blooms for the ship and now we're getting it. It's not a tech line ship. It should be the doubloon value, but 5.2 million credits doesn't hurt either. But the blooms would have been better. You could have gone back in and dumped that back into the dockyard. All right. So next up, the German battleships are finally going to be released in full now. So the Schlieffen, which is the only one that's not out yet in early access, unless you count the auction Schlieffens that people paid upwards of 28,000 doubloons for. The Schlieffen will be fully available for everyone to research in this update and I cannot wait. I honestly don't know what ship I'm going to be playing first and what review I'm going to be putting out first because I, I really want to see what the Marlboro is like because it's of course a new dockyard ship, 16 14 inch guns. That's probably the, the review I'm going to put up first because there is a very limited window on getting those starter packs and if you guys do want to buy through the event it's worth knowing if the ship's worth it in the first place or the Repulse, because I've been waiting for that ship for all eternity to get into the game, like I said earlier. Or the Schlieffen, which just looks to be such a sweet, 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 sweet German battle cruiser. So yeah, she will be out for research, and along with the entire German battle cruiser line, you can go through and unlock them all for free now, finally. So that's very good news. Alright, submarines have changed. Not that very many people are playing them at the moment. They're not in any way buffs to the submarines they've just tweaked the homing essentially they've tuned the homing to where you won't be sending torpedoes into islands as much when you launch torpedoes now they're going to track just straight out toward the target toward the ping and then they'll start predicting where the target's going to be when they get closer to the target and then when they get very close to the target they're going to go back to just going straight toward the ping and they've done some other quality of life changes to the submarine's hud they had some, had some more information on the consumables on the underwater firing the torps so forth and so on just some good quality of life changes that the submarines definitely needed in terms of just you know quality of life not saying that you know they belong in the game or anything I'm just saying it's nice things for the submarine captains 
All right, a big bit of information is that the coupons have refreshed for the ships for doubloons in the armory. So if you were waiting for that, that, that has happened. So go get yourself some, some armory ships there, children. All right, some other changes. The Zal, which is actually the background footage you've been watching for the past oh, 10 or so minutes. The Zal has been buffed yet again. Another buff to the Zal's health. The Zal's health is now up to 44,900 hit points. Which this is now a 10% buff to the Zal's hit pool. Which is now a significant change. I do expect they will probably buff her again afterwards. Because this is about a 4,000 HP pool increase. Which is nice, but before they nerfed it, which they did nerf this out quite some time ago, quite some time ago, she had, I believe, just over 50,000 HP, and I believe that would be a very comfortable spot for the Zhao if they get her back to there. I think that's probably where we will wind up with the Zhao, especially with all the introduction of very large caliber battleships that we have now, and that will be coming as well. Interesting change to the Paulo Emilio here, which isn't a major thing because it was never great at being an AADD in the first place, but take a listen to this. Historically, Paulo Emilio's 135mm guns were not dual, dual purpose. Therefore, the ship's main battery will no longer be included in her AA defenses. With that in mind, the the inter integral characteristics and parameters of Paulo Emilio's AA defenses were changed as follows. Integral characteristics, in, integral characteristics value of AA guns decreased from 39 to 28, Continuous damage increased from 95 to 121. Continuous damage per second by short-range AA guns increased from 102 to 127. Maximum AA firing range reduced from 4.6 kilometers to 2 kilometers. Wow. Okay. I mean, so Paulo Emilio nerfed, but who cares because you turned your AA off on that ship anyway because you're going to be a sneaky little... DD in the first place, so yeah, I mean, cool, whatever. I'm, who cares? It's not what the public media is about in the first place, anyways. But anyway, guys, those are the main highlights of the 1011 update. So again, come here, get you a day of premium time, check out the other little details. They're changing the London port. There are a couple other small additions to the game, but those are the major highlights for this update and what you need to know bare bones. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I decided to do this type of patch day review rather than going through the patch notes beat by beat and just almost reiterating uh, re reiterating what they say in the patch videos that they put up on the World of Warships main channel. Anyway, let me know if you guys like these types of patch videos better than the full-on in-depth patch videos. I'm up to do either one. I just figured this one would be more short to the point and probably help out players the most anyway. Anyway guys, hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Hope you're enjoying the Schlieff and all of you that are lucky to be playing her right now while I'm currently stuck at work when this goes live. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.